All right, from APnews.com, Trump rally called dangerous move in age of coronavirus. After months away from the campaign trail, President Donald Trump plans to rally his supporters next Saturday for the first time since most of the country was shuttered by the coronavirus. Stop lying, associate. Who is this? Carla Johnson and Jill. These are AP staff writers. You know, like I'm not. But no, a, the Associated Press has accepted this framework of propaganda. And there's a lot. I, I'll, I can't even get through the first paragraph of the story without going, there's a lie baked into this. Most of the country was shuttered by the coronavirus. Jim, did did the coronavirus, because you lost your job. Yeah. Did, did the coronavirus come to your, your place of business and knock on the door and say, hey, guys, I'm here. Because I'm here, you, you have to shut down now. We're not going to let you operate in the city. Is that how it happened? No, it was no. A no, not great. It was a no. <laughs> the coronavirus, no, not great. Yeah, no, just obviously, this is, just, and it's such an obvious lie that bolsters the basic government lie of we shut down the economy, we created a forced unemployment crisis to protect you from the coronavirus. It's because of the coronavirus. But now they're going to like th this is so blatantly dishonest in the wording of this, since most of the country was shuttered by the coronavirus. Now, you could say it, 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 would, it would be an honest misunderstanding if you said shuttered by government due to the coronavirus. If you said it would still be inaccurate because you're saying, because it would be more accurate to say using the coronavirus as the excuse, you know, or use it. Now, okay, maybe in proper objective journalism, you don't, you don't say excuse even, you say, the economy was shut down by the government with the justification that it used being coronavirus. Now you're being like journal. That would be sort of the, the objective, journalistically correct way of stating. Obviously, there's no such thing as a fully objective journalism here. But this, this, this is a freaking lie. Shuttered by the coronavirus. So you can't... Thomas Jefferson, a person who reads newspapers, is you know less informed than someone who reads nothing at all. Or, or you know, you read if, if you if you don't read, you're uninformed. If you read newspapers, you're misinformed. Ugh. But health experts are questioning the decision. Trump led to Tulsa, Oklahoma state that has been rel seen relatively few COVID nineteen cases yet. The Tulsa City County Health Department's director told the Tulsa World over the weekend that he wished the Trump campaign would move the date back because of a significant increase in our case trend. Now, again, coming from a government health department official, this is a bureaucrat who goes, oh, my gosh, suddenly my job is important. I've been sitting here, you know, enjoying a paycheck, but now my dream has come true. I get the authority badge of government to go along with everything that I'm doing as the health inspector, and I'm hugely more important than ever before. I don't even have to do more work, you know, I just still just nine to five and you know now i get to do interviews and, and and make big important decisions and not only that but i'm like super bureaucrat now because i have meaningful power that i can use to enrich myself right i can uh you know i, I can I can sell off favors by you know manipulating the conversation one way or i, I can advise uh, a shutdown for the the city of tulsa and I could, you know, say, well, it doesn't apply to the businesses owned by people who, you know, who, who are giving me kickbacks, who are sending me bribes. Or, you know, in, if you don't think this doesn't happen all the freaking time, you know, you're really naive. When, when you create the systemic opportunities for corruption that government does, corruption happens. And, and, and that's what it looks like. Uh, as he sir, said, this is Dr. Bruce Dart. I'm concerned about our ability to protect anyone who attends a large indoor event. And I'm also concerned about our ability to ensure the president stays safe as well. That's a stretch. President Trump travels to Tulsa, Oklahoma. You think he's def def depending on the Tulsa City County Health Department's director to keep him safe? Get real. And it's, it's really funny that, it, that it's happening this way.
We go to the next story from MSN.com via the Miami Herald and Miami Day dueling rallies in support of Black Lives Matter and President Trump. Now, fun misinterpretation of this headline could be there's a rally for Black Lives Matter and President Trump that thinks you should have cake at your rally. And then there's another rally for Black Lives Matter and President Trump that think they should have pie at their rally. And you have these dueling rallies that are in support of Black Lives Matter and President Trump trying to be the best Black Lives Matter and President Trump fusion events. It's like, no, obviously that's not the case. Peaceful protests in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and President Donald Trump were held simultaneously around Miami-Dade on Sunday, a literal manifestation of the deep schism that has divided the country after the death of George Floyd at the hands of Minnesota police. This isn't even a good divide. Like, it's not even straight liberal conservative, which would, would at least be a sort of more demographically substantive divide than active Trump supporters versus BLM supporters. Not that they're insignificant demographics, but why? Why is this happening? Uh, it's all manipulation, right? It's all a setup. Like, why is this happening now? So let's skip ahead to the sun.com. Next story. Lady Troubles. Trump losing female vote to Biden by a historic margin, not seen in more than 50 years. But men still on his side. Scroll down a little there for these numbers real quick, CJ. This is very, very telling. Thank you, CJ. So this is a very simple survey. Uh, plus or minus 3.6 percentage points. And, you know, lo looking at the source of this, you know, polling compiled by the New York Times, I I'm going to give it credit for being mostly fair as a poll, right? Is it, do I, do, do I, like, did they ask about Joe Jorgensen? Did, did they let people know, hey, there's a libertarian option? We have a female nominee, by the way, for those for, uh, of you who that's important to. It shouldn't be, but I get it. It is. Uh, no. So the, there's that. Is there is there is there a bias in the manipulation of this poll? Yeah, probably. You know, it, it is, you know, a leftist-ish uh, media outlet we're talking about here, you know. Um, but if you look at the split, uh, back to the numbers, please, CJ. Among men, Biden, 44, Trump, 46. Slight edge to Trump, but more or less neck and neck. Then you go to among women, Biden, 56, Trump, 36. Holy crap. Wow. I mean, even if that, they're both off by 3.6 percentage points because of the margin, of, even if it, you know, I'm giving the, it's, hugely significant i mean even if you like take off right eight points you go well it's only 12 percent. it's not a 20 percent difference that's still huge as trump would say now why is this happening now and uh you know the, let's see it was a 19 point disparity between the two rivals earlier this year and hillary clinton had a 14 point lead in polls leading up to the 2016 election won by trump Democrat Lyndon Johnson won the women's vote by 24 points in 64 when he toppled Goldwater, but Biden has a chance to surpass that number. Women have generally generally leaned to Democrat candidates, but that trend has intensified with Trump. According to Morley Winograd, Winograd, a senior fellow at USC's Annenberg School of Center on Communication Leadership and Policy, we think it's a reflection of a trend that started quite some time ago with the gender gap that really accelerated after Trump got elected, interestingly. So sometimes, uh, you know, Biden is significantly worse with male voters, but uh, Biden has an overall edge among voters altogether, 52-41. Like that's what, the, you, you take this average out and, it, you know, I don't want to, even the numbers in this story are they're citing different polls that are slightly off from the, the one that we showed you the graphic of. 
Uh, Biden is also dominating among young voters, 56-34. That's an 18 to 34 demographic. Uh, but also in 65 and older, uh, 51, 44. So smaller uh, gap there by contrast. But again, 10 point lead looks like a dominant margin. Now, here's the interesting thing about this female divide with Trump support now is that it's intensified recently. Has Trump made any sexist comments recently? Jim, have, you, is, have there been any new sexual assault allegations against Trump recently? I mean, I'm sure they're like every day there's some. There's some, some crazy woman comes. Oh, well, I could credit. I could. I, maybe I could convince people that he assaulted me, too. Let me see. And file her. Yeah, most of them are. But have, have there been any credible recent sexual? Has, has have, have gender issues with Trump even come up? at all since coronavirus at least i don't think so i mean I'm, I'm sure he said some things that are offensive to women here and there like you know language on twitter maybe you know but nothing and i'm giving trump credit here like there's nothing significant about this and i think this speaks to the level of intelligence at least of women voters now, I'm not saying, you know, obviously most of them are statist and, and unconscious to ethics and politics as a whole, but more than I think, I think, I still think they're paying attention more than most men might give them credit for, at least in the sense that, um, well, first of all, they're not all flocking to Joe Jorgensen. They're not all going, oh, well, the libertarians elected a female. Well, let's vote libertarian. If only it was that simple, right? But they're not, they, they didn't fail Trump over the petty stuff. So to uh, Bloomberg via msn.com, our next story, most Americans say wealth hasn't improved during Trump years. The Trump bump hasn't benefited most Americans with fewer than one in six saying their personal finances have improved since Donald Trump became president, according to a survey commissioned by bankrate.com. Almost twice as many respondents say they're worse off since Trump moved into the White House in January 2017. While about half of the U.S. adults polled, 45% said their financial situation stayed about the same. Now, COVID-19, you're thinking, well, Adam, everybody's suffering under Corona. Of course, it's going to, no. COVID-19 is only partly to blame. Three out of five of those surveyed said they failed to see any improvement in their personal wealth during Trump's presidency, even before coronavirus slammed the U.S., created the economy. Well, no, the coronavirus didn't do, didn't create the economy. And aid in the stock market gains over the past three years. So there's an infographic, if you want to pull this up, just have this next to me, CJ. It's not the most obvious one, but you see the yellow there is people who saw it was better pre-pandemic. Uh, even pre-pandemic, you know, only about, what, 25, 30-ish percent of Americans said it was better. The majority said the same, and that blue bar to the right represented people who thought it was worse. Now... The economy should just, economic prosperity, just quality of life, should just be getting better all the all all the time. And in in a in a true fair market, a free market, you know, across the board in the United States, you know, what would I expect these results to be? You know, with the libertarian president, you know, not everybody, like even in a, in a market, you know, it, a rising tide lifts all ships, um, and and certainly the you know. Libertarian society does not guarantee that there won't be violence and exploitation, but a government world, dominated world, guarantees that there will be, and getting rid of that guarantees that there will be less and there will be more prosperity. So, like you know, in a market, you know, how many, how, how many years out of ten is someone going to have a downturn or an average year? You know, I, I think right now we see a lot of economic suffering that we sort of take for granted. And you, you know, take out the government in, in your mind, examine this just as a thought exercise. With without government cutting your income in half, basically with taxation, uh, without government red tape restricting y your economic activity or ability to start a business, um, to to save and invest in in, in uh, a way that's really in line with our potential as an economy. You know, Jim, was it fair to say, like, you might in, in 10 years, 
I think this is conservative. I think most people could expect every year you're going to have solid growth. But being very conservative, even even with all the government bullshit, you know, an average person should be able to, you know, in 10 years have, you know, eight out of 10 years be positive, be net positive, maybe one year that's neutral and one that's negative. Kind of allowing for that. Is that fair? So, CJ, back to that graphic. I mean, it should be mostly yellow. Like in, in, in a free society, you know, eight eight out of ten years, at least you're going, you know, things got better for me. You know, and that gray bar should be one in ten, and that, that blue bar should be another one in ten. By the way, that red on the on the right is NA is in like declined to state or couldn't answer or whatever. But now you look at the lower bar here post-corona as of June, and most Americans are going to rightly, to some degree, blame Trump for their economic situation. And even if they go, well, it was the state governors that had the, the actual lockdown and forced unemployment part of the crisis that really affected me. That was Trump's national emergency. And when it comes time to vote for president, did he do anything about it? Remember, as James Carville said about why Trump beat, excuse me, why Clinton beat Bush the first in 92. It's the economy, stupid. Was that a good Cajun impersonation of Carville? Anyway. Skipping ahead to the next story from Daily Mail, Donald Trump bizarrely claims Iran 10 feet to the ground after video shows him unsteady on his feet and struggling to drink a glass of water at West Point graduation. A psychiatrist says he needs a brain scan. Twitter is reacting to images of Trump giving West Point graduation speech. He used two hands to sip from a cup of water, as he has done before. President Trump also appeared to have trouble descending steps after the speech. Trump mentioned, mentioned the evils of slavery in his speech to new officers. Um, can, we, can we scroll down on this story, CJ? All right, yo, already got the video. Awesome. So this thing with the, you'll, you'll see in a second, I think with the, 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 the cup, you know, he picks it up and then is like, can't get it to his lips. And then he says, uh, it, it's weird. Now, if it was just that, like, I would try to explain it away. And say, you know what? I've had weird shoulder injuries. I've had pinched nerves. You know, if he has like a, it could just be, hey, I have a recur. And of course, it's Donald Trump. He's the liar in chief. He's gonna, he's gonna lie about whatever it is. You know, and if he came out and honestly said, like, you know, I've got, I slept, I have this weird thing in my back. I sleep on it funny sometimes, and then I get this pinched nerve thing, and I can't lift my arm like this, and I have to do this. If I forget to use my other hand. I have to either put the glass down or do this dorky thing with both hands. And uh, that's it. I'd be like, okay, no big deal. Cool. <clears throat> now there's all this other stuff. You know, and he doesn't give you an honest explanation because he, he could say that. And on top of everything else, it would be fine. Now he's like, you know what, dude, I'm 74 years old. And he's honestly, he's pretty healthy and vibrant for a 74 year old. I mean, I, I'm of the opinion, nobody's qualified to be commander in chief and there should be, you know, nobody should have this authority that depends on, you know, if they go crazy, they can still push the red button or, or do something, you know, really harmful like that. So is he qualified for a job? Like, is, you know, I, I wouldn't want someone of his age. And, you know, I think if you had an objective test of his mental faculties and reliability, consistency and integrity, he'd score pretty low. Would you go mm, get this guy's finger off the red button or any important levers of power, even if it's a voluntary, you know, organizational thing. But now with all of this, I think it's safe to say that he's done. For 2020 anyway, and a lot of people I said he never had a chance of getting elected in the first place. And he overcame huge odds, you know, like that article said, he was down, you know, something like the same margin, about 10 points to, to Clinton. And it's not like with Biden, we have some great alternative. Biden is terrible. <clears throat> Ideologically, as a candidate, health-wise, is, is he 70 also, 70 years old? Yeah, or is it more than that? But he's failing, you know, and like you can tell in his interviews, and he's he's terrible on policy, he's terrible on integrity. You know, he, he represents the, the, the depths of the political swamp of the, the old 77. Biden. Wow. So Biden 77, Trump is 74, right? And this is this is just kind of funny. The uh the, the, the little physical stuff. 
People saying he's been swaying uh, at ceremonies. And, you know, uh, not able to stand up straight for extended periods. So to the next story, to kind of sum this all up, we go to Gallup.com um, and say what you will about Gallup's pro-authority slant. It is a credible polling organization. I think we can generally have faith in, in the numbers when Gallup, you know, publishes these. And you ask them, to, or you look at the data directly, <clears throat> and you, know, you look at the questions they use and make sure you, you, you incorporate into your analysis or your credibility assessment of the statistics, you know, what question did they actually use? So 42% extremely, I'm oh, sorry, the headline is U.S. national pride falls to record low. 42% extremely and 21% very proud to be an American. Republicans price down sharply in the past year. First time extreme pride among whites below 50%. Non-whites is now 24%. American pride has continued its downward trajectory, reaching the lowest point in the two decades of Gallup measurement. The new low comes at a time when the U.S. faces public health and economic crises brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. See, at least that's honest. Economic, public health and economic crises brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. You know, I think it's a little more better than the economy was shut down, right? by the virus and civil unrest following the death of George Floyd in police custody. Although the majority of adults in the U.S. still say they are extremely proud, 42% are very proud, 21%. Both readings are the lowest they have been since Gallup's initial measurement in 2001. Now, if I'm going to talk about pride, I got to, you know, I got to, someone's going to ask, well, Adam, would you, how would you answer this question, right? Now, I want to, so the question itself is, if you pull up that, graph where you can see from 2001 you can see the line that and you can see where it is now it's the lowest it's been the question is how proud are you to be an american extremely proud very proud moderately proud only a little proud or not at all proud now i can i kind of want to go both ways on this if i was knee-jerk reaction to a poll extremely proud what it means to be american is not the current state of the country to me or politics or anything like it's a because this is the this is how we got to the level of freedom that we have today from it from at least the tyranny of, of monarchies like king george to you know decentralized democratic republics that end up as runaway bureaucratic governments like we're in with this phase of, of america today but i'm the the what, with what the American Revolution, the birth of this country, represented to the world to say, screw you to the king, we're going to be independent, um, I'm extremely proud to be connected to that heritage in any way. But it's sort of like, I have a problem with pride itself. You know, what? what it's, it, it's a deadly sin. There's a real... Like, I... You know, as a practitioner of nonviolent communication, as a fan of precise language, I don't like the word pride at all. It's it, it's kind of coming from a childish place of um, a childish level of emotional maturity. I, I get something done here, and you know, get some labor done, or build something, or make a good video, and I'm I'm satisfied. I'm happy. Proud, not a regular emotion for me. And it's an emotion, right? And they're asking, and it, it, it's kind of, um, I mean, I guess you can kind of abstract it out and make it more of an intellectual concept. How proud are you? Like, how satisfied are you? And it's, a, it's a, all of these things tied in together, right? Because I, I, you know, you know, I would go to one extreme or the other. I'm either not proud at all ever, you know, because I'm always going to look at the the heinous crimes of the U.S. government and, and what we are all complicit in as U.S. citizens say, we should be ashamed. But I don't, see, that's the thing, is like if, what's the opposite of pride? Shame? Neither of these are appropriate, uh, I don't want to say an emotion is inappropriate, because an emotion, I, I, I should say, none of these, neither of these are helpful emotions to nurture.
There we go. And it's sort of like happiness, right? Is a choice. You, you, you will never control as an animal your animalistic responses to stimuli. That's part of being an animal, being a human, right? You're going to be sad. You're going to be happy. You're going to be angry. All of these you know, natural responses are going to be part of your experience as an intelligent, independent being, right? Your response to the emotions, however, is your choice. If you're sad, do you go, well, let me stay sad? Or do you go, well, let me stop and separate and at least become neutral and assess why I'm being sad and either do something about it or choose to be happy because there's no reason for me to choose to be sad. You know, or I'm I'm angry. You know, well, do I need to respond in anger? Am I, am I in a fight or flight situation? Okay, sure. But to stay in a state of anger and simmer in that? No, not appropriate. So yeah, if, if you go... Wow, look at America. Well, look, like, like I do, you know, I like I guess it's an emotional response. I look at that heritage that I'm a part of and I can say intellectually, that's awesome. I like that. I celebrate it. I promote it. Or I can say, you know, like, you know, I, I feel pride. OK, but I'm going to go to a place of better thought out relationship to this thing than my emotional response. Or am I ashamed of something like we all have shame? It's a natural part of it. Just. Human life, that's how we're programmed. You know, bad things happen. We do bad things. We have, we make mistakes. We feel shame. So I don't really buy into this emotional rubric at all. But if pride is at an all-time low, then you know what? Shame kind of uh, must be at an all-time high. And that's what's exciting. Not because there's this negative emotional response, but because out of that negative emotional response can come an appropriate, thoughtful solution. And we should be ashamed. It is a very, I should, I just, it's a very appropriate emotional response, America, to how things are going right now. You know, if America could see what America was doing to America, America would declare war on America in order to save Americans from the American regime. Yeah, it's like that at this point. We should be ashamed. And if you don't have a moment of going, ah, crap. Now, do I feel shame? No, because I don't take personal responsibility for the overall state of the country and allow it to affect my emotional state. My emotional state as an adult who is conscientious of these things, who has done the work on myself to, to correct the insufficiencies, the deficiencies in my own maturity as a result of my childhood traumas and and, and lacking and, and gotten to that point and said, look, okay, I, I, have, I am now at least to a certain extent, I am satisfied with my level of emotional maturity. I am not dominated by responses of shame or pride when I look at America. But I can look at a poll like this and understand and be sympathetic as someone who feels emotions as well, that pride is a thing and shame is a thing. And I hope one way or another that out of 2020, America can take that shame and do something rational and positive with it and grow up and correct our mistakes and elect Joe Jorgensen, libertarian, for president of the United States in 2020. That's my hope. If there is enough shame critically examined, we realize that letting our country become dominated by the duopoly of Republicans and Democrats, these criminal politicians, yeah. Hopefully we can be ashamed enough to do something about it.